My name is Carl Clark. I was born in Denver, Colorado. I left there when I was 19 years old to join the Navy. When black men enlisted in the Navy after 1932, they were only allowed to enlist as mess of tenants. This meant they were prohibited from all other jobs except servants, taking care of officers, feeding them their meals, cleaning their rooms, shining their shoes, taking care of their uniforms and such. These men were segregated aboard ships. They were used and they were abused. I was called boy and all the derogatory names so much until it became an ordinary thing, though I never accepted this fact. At age 24, I was stationed in Kanye in Hawaii at Kanye Bay, the morning of the enemy attack, December 7, 1941. I was awakened by the sound of machine gun fire as the enemy strafed the living quarters where I lived. I ran to the officers' quarters a few feet away. I pounded on the doors to waken those who were still asleep. Some of the officers couldn't believe it and told me, get the hell away from here, thinking it was only another drill. Finally, the mess attendants ran down to the loading dock in the back of the building. We watched as the enemy plane flew over our heads about 50 feet or so. One of the planes flew over with two men in it. The pilot, a man standing in the rear cockpit with a machine gun. This man looked down, saw a black mess attendants there on the dock, he smiled at us, he waved. The next Passover, he decided to have a little fun. Suddenly, he whirled around in the cockpit and he pointed the gun directly at us. We all tried to get through the door at the same time. We were all stuck and the men and man in the plane waved again, laughed, then flew on. They met almost no resistance. The planes were flying as though they were in an air show. From my vantage point, I could see all our planes burning on the apron of the runway. Shortly after the last plane flew away, a pickup truck arrived loaded with rifles and ammunition. The petty officer told the steward in charge the captain wanted all of the mess attendants to establish a beachhead there on a beach about 50 yards away behind the officer's quarters. I, being one of the older men, was put in charge of this operation. I issued the rifles, which were all new and were packed with a very thick grease. We haven't had no training breaking down weapons and such. Got sticks and such to try to clean the grease out of the rifles. I'm glad we didn't have to fire any of them. They probably would have blown our heads off. We stayed there scared as hell all night. The next morning, I got the word the enemy fleet had turned around and had left. And for me to get the men together and resume our duties as stewards and mess attendants. The same pickup truck and men who had brought the rifles to us the day before told me, tell all those boys to bring all those rifles and throw them back on this truck. We'll fight this war. I was sent to Guadalcanal for a year. After that year was up, I was assigned to a brand new Navy destroyer named the Aaron Ward. On a Navy ship, everyone has two jobs. You have your regular uh, daily duties, then you have your combat duties, known as battle stations. There was a contingent of mess attendants, cooks, and stewards on every ship. I was in charge of these men on the Aaron Ward. On most ships, the mess attendants, cooks, and stewards were assigned to one of the most hazardous stations on the ships. They were sent down into the magazines in the bowels of the ships. 
where all ammunition and explosive and ordnance are stored. Their job is to send the ammunition up to various gun mounts. After the successful invasion of Okinawa, the Aaron Ward was assigned to picket duty. The enemy was being soundly defeated and getting desperate. Enemy pilots began to fly suicide missions, also known as kamikazes. Reasoning if one man in one plane could take out a whole ship, the change would be favorable to them. One evening in May 1945, the enemy had launched a major airstrike intending to strike a heavy blow to our main fleet off Okinawa. They had to pass us to get to the main fleet. They came to us out of the sun. Within 41 minutes, our ship had been hit by nine kamikazes. All four of the other ships on our station were sunk. I saw two of them go down at the same time. On the Aaron Ward, I'd be assigned to damage control was on deck to fight fires and rescue wounded. When the first plane hit, I was blown up against the overhead, breaking my collarbone. I was the only survivor of an eight-man damage control team. About two minutes later, the second plane came in. I stared at the pilot as he guided his plane right into our ship striking it just below the deck that I was on. The explosion blew me into the air over the superstructure to the other side of the ship. By the time the last plane had slammed into our ship, we had lost power and were dead in the water. I carried at least six wounded shipmates up to the first aid station, where my men had removed their own helmets and life jackets and were assisting the doctor with saving lives. We had taken on lots of water and the main deck was only 10 inches above the water on the port side. We lost over 40 men that day. After the battle that night, I was so tired, I just went to sleep where I lay next to the pile of slain shipmates. When I tried to get off the deck, I had to struggle to free myself from all the blood that had oozed across the deck to the scuppers. My body had blocked the floor of the, and acted as a dam against the blood that had accumulated at my side and stuck me to the deck. Later that day, I helped scrape parts and pieces of my shipmates off the bulkheads and the structures. That morning, as we docked, the captain came to me and commended me and my men for the effort we had put forth during the battle the evening before. Captain Sanders went all the way to Washington, D.C. and tried to get some recognition for what we did. But when he came back to the ship, he told me and the other stewards, said I tried, but they wouldn't even give me a letter. They wouldn't give me anything. 